Welcome to Sherry Hales Ministries. I'm Sherry Hales, and today we will continue with our ministry series, How to Engage in and Exercise Effective Christian Communication and Word. And today's word is grown. So I want to get right into it. So to groan, it is a low, mournful sound uttered in pain or grief. And the focus uh, scripture for this entire series is found in Philemon 6, and it says, Let the communication of thy faith may become effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. And I've explained in um, multiple videos why that is our focus scripture, um, so I'm not going to go into detail with that again. Um, the a question that we are keeping in our mind throughout this entire series is what message does my faith walk communicate? We know that the Bible says that we are in fact living epistles. And so our faith walk does communicate something. And we want our faith walk to communicate what the Lord wants it to communicate. And we want to um, draw others to Christ through our faith walk. Um, and so we just want to keep that in in our minds. It's not um, uh, it's not um, with the thought or the idea of condemnation or measurement. It's just to remind us that our faith walk does in fact communicate something. And um, the scripture that I will be focusing on today is Romans eight. And the participants uh, for the Bible study portion. We'll also focus on Psalm, uh, the 102nd Psalm, in addition to watching this, uh, this video. And so um, we have been looking at words in the Bible that um, are words of communication. And so if you do want to see some of those videos, you can look at my website www.cherryhalesministries.weebly.com So we've looked at a lot of different words that deal with communication. And today the word, again, is groan. So I, I um, have selected Romans 8 because Romans 8 does actually um, have that word, um, our focus word in the scripture that I'm going to be reading today. So I'm going to read... Um, Romans 8 and then I will go back over it and we'll look at it a little more closely. I will be reading from the King James um, Version of the Bible. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then, they that are in the flesh cannot please God. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken 
your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh. For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to com be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of the creature waited for the manifestation of the sons of God for the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who hath subjected the same in hope, because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves grown within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit, the redemption of our body. For we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why doth he yet hope for it? But if we hope for that we see not, then do we with patience wait for it. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that all things work together for the good of them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn amongst many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called, and whom he called, them he also justified and whom he justified, them he also glorified. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spareth not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. Who is it he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again. Who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? It is, as it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. And uh, I have just read um, 
Romans 8 uh, from the King James uh, Version of the Bible. Again, the word that we are focusing on is groan or groaning. And so um, I want to just go ahead and just go back and take a look at that entire um, chapter that we just that I just read. So um, verses one and two. There is now there is therefore now no no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death so this is basically saying that if we do not um, walk after our um, natural uh, fleshly carnal nature yet once we are born again we receive the Spirit of God um, and we walk after the Spirit of God, the new man, then um, the condemnation um, has no more, um, it can no, we are no longer condemned because Christ died for us so that um, he would remove the stain of sin from us. And so in the act of Christ dying, um, he took away sin. And if we... Um, have accepted him as our personal Lord and Savior, then he exchanges um, uh, his righteousness um, and the sins that he already paid the price for, they're already paid for. So those sins are now paid for. So it is as if we have, all of our sins are now paid for as well because we are walking in, um, we are saved and we are walking by the spirit and not by our carnal fleshly nature that we were born into. So I'm um, going to read verses 3 to 5 now. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. For they that for they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. So um, the, the law of Moses, the law that Moses um, gave, that law actually just was a magnifier. It magnified sin and, um, and the effects of sin. Um, it showed man... Um, that he was indeed a sinful being and um, in need of a savior. But that is where it ended. So it had the power to reveal what sin was, but it did not have the power to correct um, the, 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 uh, the problem of sin. Um, and that's why the goat's blood and the sheep's blood, it, it was, it was um, an ongoing thing because the blood of the sheep the blood of the goat, it was not um, a pure blood. So the Bible tells us that sin is required. Uh, I'm sorry, for the remission of sin, um, blood is required for the remission of sin. And so it took a pure blood to completely um, free us from, from uh, the guilt of sin. And so that is why the blood of Jesus was required. And then in that act, um, again, we are now um, justified because of that. And um, so now we walk after the Spirit. And because the Spirit of, of God is within us, we are now mindful of the things of the Spirit. Learning about God, learning about the Bible, learning about Christ, living our lives um, submitted to the Lord and the way that He wants us to. Instead of um, uh, the the nature that we are born into, so when we are born, we have a nature, and that nature is all about us. It's all about um, survival. It's all about the the natural human desires, the things that are are within us. That is our nature, and we don't go beyond that nature. So as we grow up. The things that we desire. So when we are little babies, we desire milk. 
We desire to be, you know, comforted and held and warm. So, and those are the things that we seek after because those are the things that our flesh is telling us that we need. And so when we get older and we get bigger, we develop more and more um, desires, uh, more and more wants. We, desire, we, we develop an appetite for certain things. Um, and so that's what we gravitate uh, towards. So as, as an infant, when we start to, when we are no longer just taking only milk and we start to eat um, food, you know, you'll see some children like a sweet, sweet potato, some like peas. So um, the human is, is developing an appetite for the things that we like. And those are the things that we gravitate towards. And the things that we don't, we don't want those. You know, some, some children will not eat peas. They don't like them. But they like um, sweet potatoes or apples or things of that nature. And so when we are in the flesh, we are in the nature of man, which is all about our own appetites, our own desires, the things that satisfy us, the things that make us feel a certain way, the things that feel um, that uh, satisfy our ego, the things that um, build us up, that give us, um, you know, the, the will to, um, to continue on. And, and, you know, and it's not that there's anything wrong with that, but as we get older, there's a nature that is within us, which is called the carnal nature or the sinful nature of man because of the fall of Adam. And so we gravitate towards that naturally because um, we are of a fallen nature. And the only way to rectify that is through um, a personal relationship with the Lord where he then call, makes us born again and we become a new man. And then he's telling us to walk in the newness of the spirit and not after the flesh. So uh, I'm going to read verses four, um, verses six to eight. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. So we have our natural carnal mind. Again, um, what I basically just said. So that is our mindset is on pleasing ourselves, what we want, our appetite, our own um, the things that we want in life. Um, and that nature is not a nature. The mind, the carnal mind is not seeking to please God. Um, it's not seeking, it's not seeking to please God, seeking to please ourselves. And this is telling us that the carnal mind cannot please God. Um, it says that, um, for it is not subject to the law of God, not subject to the law of the spirit. And it cannot be, it, it, it cannot be, it can only um, be subject to the things of the flesh. Um, now I'm going to read verses nine to 10. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. So there's an if, if the spirit of God dwells in us. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. If you don't have the spirit of Christ, you are none of his. You do not belong to God. If you don't have his spirit, you don't belong to him. Think about, think about it as simple as this. The spirit is what gives life. Spirit, period, gives life to a human body. If we, if a person no longer has a spirit in their body, they are none of this as far as being a human being anymore because the spirit has departed. So it is the spirit that gives life. If God's spirit, which gives life, is not in us, we cannot be a child of God because his spirit is not in us. So we are none of his, which this is what this says here. So um, now I'm going to go on to, okay, I'm, I'm going to read 10. And if Christ be in you, so if he is in us, the body is dead. The body is dead because of sin. So that's just saying we are 
dead to sin. We don't have to, we are no, no longer in bondage to it. We're no longer in bondage to sin. So we don't have to live a sinful life because Christ being in us has made us free from that. So it's not saying a physical death. It's just talking about dead to sin, which is what it says. Um, but the spirit of life, but the spirit of life because of righteousness. Okay. So verse 11 to 13. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh. For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. So um, when Christ, when his spirit comes in us, he quickens us to live a life that is a life that he approves of, a, a righteous life. So God is saying, if you choose to live according to your sinful flesh nature, eventually, you know, you, you will die because to be separated from God is, is death. So, um, we cannot, um, he's a holy God. So if we don't accept him, if we don't want to live as he, um, as he, you know, says is righteous, then we are separating ourselves because we're saying, I don't want that. And in or if we don't accept Christ, then outside of him, there's death. So it's just by default, there's death outside of God. In God, there's life, but outside of him, it's death. Okay, so verse um, 14, I'm going to read. For as many are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. So that's pretty, pretty clear. 15 to, I'm going to read verse 15. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear so there is fear within bondage but ye have received the spirit of adoption of adoption whereby we cry Abba Father so we don't have to be afraid because if there's any situation we can cry Abba Father our Father in heaven he is God and he um, he's higher than anything and his power is above any and everything so we can call out to our Father Abba Father um, let's see. Verse 16, the spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs. So now he's telling us what, what we have in Christ. So if we are children of God, then we are heirs of God. Just like in the natural, a child of someone is their heir. So, and joint heirs with Christ. So Christ is an heir and we are joint. We, we too, we also are heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may be glorified together. So there is a suffering um, that is a result of living life as a Christian. Because this world is a, is a, um, a world that is... Um, and I, you know, I've said it in, in many videos, uh, you know, um, basically Adam gave the world to Satan. Satan is currently the ruler of this world. That's why there's so much wickedness, so much hatred, so much division. It's because the carnal nature of man, if you're not born again, has nothing to do with saying I'm a Christian, um, has nothing to do with saying um, I accept you as my personal Lord and Savior. You, we can say all types of things, but if we don't really mean it, then it didn't really change us. Um, so we can say it. We can say we're a Christian, but if we never really learn to be a Christian, we never try to be a Christian, then we really aren't a Christian. Um, um, the, the only thing that will transform us from living in in a way that is carnal that is given um to you know um the things of this this world which is ruled by the devil right now because again adam gave the world over he gave everything over 
that man was supposed to have dominion over, he gave it to the devil. And so um, these things, that's why there's so much wickedness. That's why there's so much hatred, uh, racism, um, you know, divisions, you know, cruelty, um, because Satan is running the show. And, um, it, it, and, and basically if you do not give yourself over to Christ, um, then, you know, you, you just, you, you are a part of the system. What pulls us out of that system is a life truly devoted to Christ and, and learning of him. You have, we have to actually learn of him. Um, think of it this way. This talked about heirs. If, if a person in the natural, you know, they left their children, um, you know, a million dollars, two million dollars, five million dollars, they left it to them. But their children never ever went to the bank to utilize or use or withdraw any of that money. They just left it there. And they just lived their lives every day. Um, let's say they worked at a job where, you know, they were making a very low salary and they just kept doing that. So they're living that way, but they are an heir of million of millions of dollars. So they really are a millionaire, but they're not living like it. We are the same way. If we never access the things that God has given to us, we will continue to live, um, as, as any natural man that who has not been born again. We have to actually access this, these things and we have to learn how to access these things. We have to learn how to be a Christian. That's why Christ said, follow me, because he's gonna teach us how to do it. But we must follow him. And if we don't, we won't know. Um, so let's see, I'm going to go on to, let's see, I think I stopped at 17. So I'm going to go on to verse 18. Um, and it says, for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to com to be compared with the glory, which shall be revealed in us. There's a glory that shall be revealed in us. And, you know, this statement is saying as bad as it can get, no matter what, because God knows all that can happen to a person in this world. And this is saying no matter what, it still can't be compared, no matter how bad it can get, it can't be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. So God has glory for us that is beyond anything that we can even dream up. We, we can't even, we can't, we couldn't even, um, comprehend it. That's how good it's going to be, you know? Um, and, and it starts now. Eternity actually starts now because as a Christian, um, you know, our lives, we just transition to another form when we pass over, we transition, but our lives actually still continue. We're still alive. So there's going to be a glory and the glory already starts in us. It starts uh, working even on this side of life, but it will be come to its fullness in Christ. Once we transition, we'll receive the fullness of it. And, and Paul is telling us that no matter what happens here, it can't compare. We can't imagine the wonderful things that God has for us. We can't even imagine it's going to be just that wonderful. Verse 19 to 25, for the earnest expectation of the creature, and, and that's actually creation, everything that's created. The earnest expectation of the creature waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. So all of creation is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God, us that belong to God. Everything is waiting for us because see, first it belonged to the sons of God. 
But then Adam gave it over to the devil. So all everything is waiting for it to be reclaimed to um, to God. And the manifestation of the sons of God is what will cause that to happen. And so it says, for the earnest expectation, um, for the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. For the creature or creation was made subject to vanity. It was made subject to vanity. Not willingly, um, not willingly, but by reason of him who hath subjected the same in hope. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. So basically this is saying the vanity, the way I am interpreting it is those things that people do because of their own desires their own they want things a certain way think about um i guess I, i'm and i may not say it right because i don't know a whole lot about it but the way that the food is manipulated now okay this is this is being done things are being done um animals are being mistreated for a mass production of um a food so they are creation they are, they are creation but because of the vanity of man the pride of man the desire for more for more money more profit more income man has come up with ways of doing things that affects all of creation in a way that hurts creation so even though animals could be treated in a humane way, you know, even animals that will be later, you know, used as, as food. Um, but they could have lives that are humane and, and have good lives. But yet, you know, and I've seen some videos, you know, where, you know, the, the animals are being mistreated horribly and, you know, put in little cages and, 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 piled in there together and that's where they live out their lives and you know their entire lives where they can barely move so this is this is similar that's that's the image that came to my mind to 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 talk about what this verse is talking about all of creation is suffering because of the vanity of man because of the desires that are in man's heart because man wants more and more and all of it comes back to appearances. He he is prideful. He wants to appear to be, you know, larger than life. And um, because of it, he will abuse and misuse and mistreat everything in creation. Um, his his brothers and sisters and animals and 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 the earth itself. And so all of creation is groaning and waiting for the manifestation of those that are righteous, the sons of God, that will treat all of humanity, all of earth, all of creation in a loving, compassionate um, you know, way, like God wanted it to be in the first place. So all of creation is groaning. Humans, everybody, everything is just waiting for the manifestation. When will I be valued again? When will I be loved again? When will I be treated well again? Everything is waiting on that. Um, okay, I'm going to read 21 again. I think I already read it, but I'm going to read it again. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered. So, the, so creation will be delivered too. From the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. Um, let me see. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. And not only they, but ourselves also, 
don't don't people suffer people are suffering people suffer because of the vanity of man it is the pride of man that you know can you know just allow others to to starve and go hungry in a world where it doesn't have to be yet systems are created in a way to undervalue people and to not really distribute the wealth in a way that everybody can be you know um okay everybody can eat dinner everybody can you know have three meals a day everybody can have clean water everybody can have clean air everybody can you know um have their best lives so everything is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of god so god his way is the way that will lead us to love our neighbor as we love ourselves and when we love we're not going to hurt because we love and so that's what this is talking about um let's see I'm going to read 23 and not only they but ourselves also which have the first fruits of the spirit even we ourselves grown within ourselves waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of our body so we even we want everything to be redeemed so um our our body so we have been redeemed our spirit our soul man but we want our body also. We don't want to be subjected to aches and pains and ailments and, you know, and things like that. And, and, and even just the process of aging, um, you know, it wasn't set up like that. That was not God's original plan. That was not his best. This is everything that happens now is a result of what Adam did. So even our bodies, when we are changed, our bodies will be glorified. We will have a glorified, um, you know, um, when, when we have, so we will, we, you know, and I don't want to get off of this message, but there is a change that will occur. So we will go to heaven when we leave this earth, but heaven actually is not our eternal home. Because God's going to create a new heaven and a new earth. He actually wants us to live on earth. And he's going to make the earth new. And give us new glorified bodies that do not get sick. Um, that are not subject to aging and, and, and the things that happen. I don't know all of, you know, who knows. We don't know. All of that hasn't been revealed to us. Um, but... That's what this is talking about anyway. And again, I don't want to get too far off of my message. I'm focusing on a word right now. The word groaning is why I came to this um, passage. And I've said before, even though we are focusing on certain words, we are going to talk about, you know, the entire uh, scripture that's read. But I don't want to go into a totally different message either. So let me move on. Um, And then it says, I'm at 24 now, for we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why doth he yet hope for? So it's talking about faith. But if we hope for that we see not, then we do with patience wait for it. So we have to wait for things because we don't see it. It's not arrived yet. So we have to be patient and wait. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercessions for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. So, so we have infirmities, we have weaknesses, we have shortcomings. Some, sometimes we just don't, we don't know though always. We don't know where the problems are in life, what we ought to be praying for. Um, so sometimes when we are going to God in prayer, we may not know exactly what to say or how to say it, but sometimes it's just a, a groaning. 
you know, some people who have um, older grandparents or, or, the, or you've experienced the older generations um, where, where, where some of the old grandmothers, sometimes they would just be and rocking and things like that. It was like a groan. And they are calling out kind of to God in their own spirit. And it's like, well, what are they doing that for? But they are actually communicating. Their spirit man is calling out to God. They don't know quite what to say. So it's just a, a moan, a groan, a, you know, just a hum from the spirit man. And, and that's what that's talking about there. Um... Okay, so now I'm at verse, um, I'm going to read 25. I'm not sure if I've read it already. It says, but if we hope for that we see not, for what, for that we see not, then we do with patience wait for it. Likewise, the spirit also helpeth. Okay, I read that. Verse 27, and he that searcheth the hearts, he that searcheth the hearts, knoweth what is the mind of the spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints, according to the will of God. That's Christ. It's talking about Christ there. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. So that's wonderful, isn't it? That's just wonderful. Um, no matter what, it's going to work together. God's going to work it together. It's going to work it together for our good, just like Christ. They put him on that cross and they thought, you know, the devil was probably high-fiving and cheering and all him and all the demons so happy. Look at what's happening to Christ. High five, we did it. But little did they know, it all worked together. <laughs> and that's what this is talking about. No matter how bad it seems, God works it all together for good. And only God can do that. Um, Let's see. Now I'm at 29. For whom he did foreknow, he also did, did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son. And that's what I've been saying. Um, in another video, I did say, that's the mission of the Christian, is to become more and more like Christ. It's a progression. But we are supposed to be becoming more and more like Christ. And it says it right there. He predestined us to be conformed to the image of his son. That's what he wants us to do as Christians, become more like the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn amongst many brethren. Moreover, whom, did, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. So he called us. And whom he called, them he also justified. So he justified us. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. So he glorified us as well. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? So it doesn't matter who doesn't like us. It doesn't matter. Um, in the end, you know, so we get so caught up on a moment in time. But but in God, in the Lord, the Bible tells us in God, we live and move and have our being. And if we are Christians, it is in God that we live and move and have our being. So a moment in time, it may look a certain way, but God already told us he's going to work it all together for our good. Then he goes on to say this, he that spareth not his own son, he didn't even spare his own son, but delivered him up for us, all of us who've accepted God. He, he delivered him up even not only for those that accept him, but for humanity. That's how much he loves us. Um, and so, but he delivered him up for us all. It says it. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? He's going to give us all things. This is applying to the Christians, although the call went out to everybody. But it's the only the ones that respond 
who this is being um, applied to. Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? Is it, it is God that justifieth. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again. Who is even at the right hand of God? Who also maketh intercession for us? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation? So it's telling us, in life we will have tribulations. Things are going to happen. But he's saying, it doesn't matter because it can't separate us from the love of Christ. This version of life is not the end. Eternity is to come. Eternity is to come. Who shall separate us from... And this is part of eternity, actually, because it just continues on forever. But what happens to us here, how we live our lives here, we are living for, um, you know, once we are... What we do here um, will say where we spend eternity. So how we live here will say what happens to us in, in eternity. And at that point, there's no more choosing. Now you've made your choice. So there's a saying, you made your bed, lay in it. So that, that's where it comes down to. It's like, okay, well, this is what you wanted. This is what you chose. So now you get what you wanted, basically. Um... So it says, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? Doesn't matter. Nothing can separate us from his great love. As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him. That loved us so we can conquer through him that loves us god has our back god has us in the palm of his hand and he says that we are the apple of his eye he loves us just that much he watches over us he has appointed his angels to watch over us and protect us and to stay with us and to intervene on our behalf and christ is always praying for us at all times and he's given his Holy Spirit to us to guide us in life um, and then it says for I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor height nor depth nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen and glory, hallelujah to God. Um, it's a wonderful thing. It's a wonderful thing to be in the family of God um, and to just get to know him and to understand all of what that means because... Um, uh, I think, you know, a lot of people just don't know. Uh, but it, the more you learn about the Lord, that you really learn about him and, and you, you really are finding out about who he is. And um, it's just a wonderful thing. Um, and it just opens up more and more and more. Um, the Bible tells us um, his mercies are new every day. And, um, you know, every day new mercies and um he just blesses us he blesses us it's a progressive thing um so you know and, and sometimes the words just escape me you know and not only me everyone that knows him that knows the lord because he's so grand at some point we're just saying the same things over and over because there's just no words to explain it um, so it's a thing where you have to just kind of get to know him for yourself and then you'll know and understand. So thank you so much for spending this time with me. If you have spent this time with me, I truly appreciate it. I know you could have been doing anything. So I just want to pray. Um, 
and wrap everything up. Father God, thank you so much for another day to learn more about you. I just pray, Lord, that, um, you know, in, in my submitting to, to uh, do what you've asked me to do, that I've been pleasing in your sight. Um, I pray that you will just open up the understanding of all of those that will be gracious enough to take the time to even listen to this video at any point at which they listen to it. I ask that you will bless them and bless me as well and just um, help us to know you more. I ask that you bless us and keep us and make your face shine upon us. Lift up your countenance upon us. Be gracious to us and give us a greater knowledge and understanding of you. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray, amen. And if you have agreed with that prayer, you can say amen as well. Thank you again for spending this time with me. Until the next time, be blessed and walk with God.